Nick, 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 Nickelodeon. From Nickelodeon Animation in Burbank, California, this is the Nickelodeon Animation Podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Hector Navarro, and we've got a beautiful episode for you today. Our guest was literally born to portray some of your favorite characters like Beast Boy from the Teen Titans and Teen Titans Go!, Iron Fist from Ultimate Spider-Man, and Michelangelo, the heart and soul of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We're talking to one of the most talented, unique, and coolest actors working today, Mr. Greg Sipes. All right, Greg, let's talk a little bit about how did you get started in acting, and then how did you find your way in the world of voice acting? Well, I started off as an actor in South Florida. Since, since I was a little boy, I can remember my first audition or thing that I did, but <laughs> I, my grandparents were actors. My grandma was in, she had little parts in movies, like uh, Frank Sinatra movies, and then later on she um, she was kind of like the go-to actress in south florida her name is selma sipes and she mm. she had roles in miami vice little speaking roles and then eventually she got a role a speaking role in um what's the martin lawrence movie with will smith or was it will smith bad boys bad, bad boys. boys she was in yeah. bad boys <laughs> like uh there's a scene where they break through this um barbershop wall or whatever and there's mm-hmm. this old lady there with like the you know the thing over her head doing her curls and she's got a line she goes what the <laughs> and that's my grandma and then my grandpa Brett Sipes was a real life wizard he had a big long wizard beard and he was part of Mensa he's a genius but he was also an, a theater actor and he was actually the first he was a wizard in the original Superboy the first ever Superboy TV show yeah so there I came from a family of actors and my dad was a TV director in Miami and they all inspired me to like you know do children's theater which I loved I had a great time doing musical children's theater and then i got into doing commercials in south florida which is mostly all there is Mm -hmm. and i got lucky to book a lot of commercials growing up and it was very fun and i I enjoyed it and i made money as a kid which i I would buy go-karts and (laughs) surf trips to costa rica and i would have money which really felt good too as a kid to like buy cool things that i loved i would also uh as far as voice acting goes i really started playing with it as a boy as a prank caller (laughs) <laughs> I love prank calling people. I love messing with people. And I, al- I also have okay. nine brothers and sisters. Sure. And we drive around in a camper across America. And my dad would let me get on the CB and mess with truck drivers. <laughs> with I mean, voices and with stuff? With voices. And my dad's like, oh, you're so good at this. Maybe one day you'll do cartoons. What kind of? Do you remember what kind of voices you would do on a CB radio me, to mess with I, truckers? I would mess with everything. I would be like, be a girl, hey guys, or whatever. And they would know it was not a real girl. Yeah. <laughs> um, or, or, you know, just, just, you know, I really liked, I loved jerky boys growing up. Mm. I love, you know, Frank Rizzo, open your... Ears, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, and all the different, the, the you know, I, this snake bit me in the eye, or, uh, or you know, just uh, shall I bring all my shoes? Uh, just, I just love the jerky boys and, and prank calling, and that got harder as uh, cell phones started to come yeah. about, and you yeah. can't really hide your number and stuff. So yeah. I stopped prank calling. Well, I tried. I mean, now, now you know what I do. I answer my uh, phone anytime like a telemarketer calls. Yep. And I prank call. I basically do voices <laughs> to mess with the telemarketers. I what, love it. Like, what does that sound like? It's usually like, it's hello, very... He- hello, is this, uh, is, this, is this Mr. Greg Sipes? Sipes? It's usually pretty dirty, so I don't know if it's appropriate. <laughs> All right, then we won't do it. We yeah, won't do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you help with that? <laughs> Dr. Frankenstein strikes again! Dude, you should see your face right now. <laughs> You look so mad. Did you watch cartoons as a kid? Did you love animation as a kid? What kind of stuff did you watch when you were a kid? Of course. Um, really, I mean, the funny thing is my favorite cartoon was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles growing <laughs> up. Like, when I look back, what cartoons do I actually remember watching the most? It was the Turtles. I just remember every day I would watch the Ninja Turtles. And it made me feel good. I loved the show. It really inspired a lot of happiness in my life. And 
every birthday party I would have was really like a Ninja Turtles roller skating rink part, <laughs> pizza party. Um, and Halloween, I would definitely uh, dress up as one of the turtles. And usually Mikey, I love nunchucks and I love the color orange. I, I actually painted an orange stripe around my whole room at one point. Wow. So it was very dear to me. So to be able to offer it to this next generation of kids has been really special because it's Mike, Michelangelo and the turtles are really important to me and special to me. So yeah. Um, yeah, they taught you stuff, right? Like you they taught me, they got me into meditation. The meditation. They really inspired my like, you know, um, you know, like being a skateboarder, really surfing. Like when I started surfing, I was definitely still very much into the turtles as a boy. And I'd be like, oh, the turtles surf. I want to get out there and surf. So it was just all about the stoke. It's all about the cowbunga. And, um, and then, you know, when it's funny though, Calbunga, the whole Calbunga thing, because when I first got the role of Mikey, they're like, "We don't, we're not going to use Calbunga right yeah. off the bat. We want a new catchphrase. Do you have any ideas?" And me and Ciro, we thought about some ideas, and then the first day of recording, they're like, "Okay, what do you got?" And I go, "I think I have something." And I was like, "Booyakasha!" In the whole room, I, I, it was just like everything lit up, and I was like, "All yeah. right, this is it." And sure enough, now, whatever, six years later, kids all around the world are screaming Buya Kasha all the time. Yeah. And it's actually a very special meaning. People are like, what? Yeah, what does it mean? It actually means all glories to the Most High. Really? It comes from I Ireland and then it went to Jamaica. But it actually means all glories to the Most High. And what, what that means is, you know, bringing in the highest vibration into the now. It's an affirmation to bring in positivity and love and consciousness. So I thought that was really special to have kids all around the world saying, Booyakasha! Because it actually brings in light and love. Yeah. So there's a lot of conscious awareness and choosing Booyakasha. And, and it just works. It's fun to say. Greg, how has playing the characters that you've played affected your life? How have they affected you as a human being? Well, every character I play affects me as much as i affect them they actually want to it kind of it affects me like for instance even if i'm playing a character that's got a deeper voice or something mm -hmm. if i do it enough my actual voice starts to deepen <laughs> but also the characteristics of the character i start to actually kind of embody them as much as they they kind of embody the characters i play embody a whole bunch of me i start to kind of uh, like i'm i'm very much like michelangelo i'm very much like beast boy i'm mm -hmm. very much like iron fist i'm very much like basically every role i play is a you know i'm like them and they're a lot like me mm -hmm. and many times even the music that i write winds up becoming a big part of all the characters that I play too. So like, even if my characters weren't musicians in the first place, they wind up becoming <laughs> rappers, singers, musicians. And, yeah. And I, I love that part of it all too. How even in li the live action world that happens too, it's, it's similar. All the roles I play on TV or in movies uh, in the live action world wind up becoming very much like a, a big part of who I am. I get to, you know, bring myself to everything, which yeah. is cool. I think that's why I get cast a lot for things uh, they want me in the role mm -hmm. yeah so they it's want, very you, fun you, when you hire Greg Sipes you're gonna get Greg Sipes you can take advantage <laughs> of that who wants pizza Leo's favorite jelly bean anchovy and jalapeno isn't that your favorite just go with it Beast Boy is like your OG guy and yeah, you're still I doing him today Beast Boy yeah you, cre <laughs> you created him yeah in many ways uh, uh, they've allowed me to really just bring everything that I want to the character and allow it to live. I've, you know, I've created a whole new language for him. I get to be Beast Boy in uh, so many different uh, shows as well. Yeah. From, um, not just Teen Titans, but I get to be Beast Boy in basically all of the whole DC world, which mm -hmm. is a real blessing. DC and, superhero girls, and anytime a video comes out, video game comes out, and, and there's other you know. stuff coming which I can't talk. Well, although our movie, uh, we do have a big feature film coming to theaters 2018, June, a big Teen Titans Go movie. Dude, that's crazy. crazy. I don't know if you can answer this. Have you already recorded that? We've started. You guys have started? Oh, Man, yeah. what is that like? It's It feels like our regular show yeah. <laughs> in, way, it, in many ways. I mean, I don't know how much I can say really other than it's it's just a... You know, Teen Titans go to the movies, <laughs> which will be fun and That's wild, perfect. and it has been. It'll be a lot of fun music and um, just the, the comedy that I love so much about the show will definitely be um, yeah 
a big part of the the movie, and it's a very controversial it. show. I know. I think it's kind of like the Howard Stern kind of thing, where <laughs> they say eighty percent of his viewers who hate him watch like ninety percent or listen to ninety percent of his show, and the people that love him only listen to forty percent. <laughs> so I think the haters watch Teen Titans go more than the people that actually love it. You guys did a made-for-TV movie. You guys did. You guys were Teen Titans, right? Yeah. And then when the show gets announced that it's coming back, it's something that the fans never let go of. You never let go of. Right? Everybody was always asking for more Beast Boy, more, more Beast Boy. You know how it came back, though? How did it come back? I actually started a rumor. You did? I did. <laughs> I was at a Comic-Con in Australia, and I was on stage, and I just decided to play one of my, the songs that I wrote. And I'm like, oh, this song's for Tara, and it's going to be in a new series. <laughs> and they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, they're like, it's coming back. I go, yeah. <laughs> and Cartoon Network received more actual handwritten fan mail for the show to come back than any other just any other family period wow. for any show of all, a Cartoon Network's history and they're like alright well we should probably try something so we did a couple shorts and the shorts did really well and were yeah. re- really well received and then Sam Register um, put together a team to make this really wild weird oddball show called Teen Titans Go and it's it's the number one show on Cartoon Network and has been for the past four or five years that's crazy cons- or four years at least when that show got announced to come back mm-hmm. those hardcore fans of Teen Titans were told like okay it's coming back but it's gonna be like a comedy show like it's gonna be off the wall it's gonna be crazy yeah. it's gonna be kooky it's gonna be yeah. and, and there now, was controversy like that's crazy yeah you know anytime you kind of bring something back to life it people are always like oh you know we want the original Mm -hmm. every day i still get hundreds i swear (laughs) hundreds of people like bring back season or you know the original teen titans we want season six yeah (laughs) and the funny thing is they'll they will get that yeah the fans are going to get what they want they will bring it back eventually yeah um but cartoon network now airs both all the time which is really cool because the fans wanted it so much now we have the regular teen titans and teen titans go on oh that's all awesome. day long and then you know to be a part of nickelodeon's teenage mutant ninja turtles i think we also got a similar kind of reaction when the series were being birthed over here at nickelodeon where people oh, like, yeah. oh no we want the whatever the mm-hmm. the n- 99 show or whatever I don't even yeah, remember the, yeah. it kind of, I feel like Turtles kind of went away in my mind for a while after the 80s show yeah it just kind of went away mm-hmm. I'm sure you know there was different incarnations of of the show but they weren't that good in my opinion until Sirenielli and Nickelodeon put together this new team and cast and and really rocked the show and it, it really brought the Turtles back to life you know um I think two times bigger than it ever was. Yeah. I mean, it was controversial, but it definitely, we won people's hearts over in a big way. Not just people's hearts, but like Turtle Papa. I'm talking Papa Turtle. Kevin Eastman has even said, it's like, this is the show. This is my favorite iteration. Yeah. And I think that's really special to be that Mikey out of all the iterations and hopefully out of all the iterations that ever happen. Well, this will always be that show that kind of is the cream of the crop. Um, I, I don't think, there'll ever be a better looking show that's for sure and yeah. as far as our cast with Sean Astin and Seth Green and Rob Paulson and, and all the guest cast and and you know Josh Peck and just everybody it was just a very magical powerful you know talented group of people and you know even having Roseanne Barr as the prime crank and she's so an evil good. lady in real life so, so it's fun to have <laughs> <laughs> hurry Mikey there's nowhere for you to run Leo! Leo! All of you will die here. What is for you like the main difference between on-camera acting and the world of voiceover acting? The main difference is I don't have to remember lines. Great, great. (laughs) (laughs) You got it right there in front of you. Which I like. I hate remembering lines, honestly. It's not my favorite thing. But there's something that happens uh, when you do take the time to memorize lines. It's it's a different kind of muscle. Mm -hmm. I get to have a a lot of fun in both realms as a voice actor, not having to remember lines. And then there's the painstaking process of memorizing lines, but then there's the benefit of actually having the memorize and then being able to play um, yeah. in the live action world and becoming a character not just with my voice but like fully embodying something is really fun has there ever been a point where you have improvised have played have come up with something have influenced the direction or the writing of a character have given any feedback like how how much ownership of these characters do you take the more i play a character the more it just becomes um 
I, I influence the character. Like even my role on the middle on mm-hmm. ABC's The Middle, which mm-hmm. I've been on since season one, and we're on season seven now. We've we just hit our two hundredth episode. Wow! Um, and I'm I'm on a couple every season. Um, eventually, they just start writing it kind of like as me. Yeah. <laughs> At first, you, I, I was like Chuck, the kind of like uh, I lived in a trailer, and but now it's Greg Sipes Chuck, where I'm yeah. like I'm teaching meditation <laughs> kind of things, and he speaks a lot like me, and yeah, yeah. So kind of every role, including Iron Fist or even Michelangelo, um, and that's one of the things Nickelodeon wanted when I got the role was they wanted something different than any other Michelangelo that's ever been, and. Yeah. I just brought myself to the role. It was like a year-long process for you to get cast as Mikey, Mm -hmm. but you were there from the beginning. What was the auditioning process like, and what was the process like for you to get the role of Michelangelo? Well, you know, (sighs) Cyril kind of drew Mikey like me Mm -hmm. for whatever reason. I don't know if you could see it or not, but there's... (laughs) Oh, I can see it. I'm in the Mikey character design a lot. So he was like, I'm going to draw him like you're inspiring his face, his eyes, his energy. It's the eyes, man. It's the big eyes. Yeah, and he's... um, Mikey's very much me and uh, there's, you know, callbacks. The initial reading, I think I had to read at my agents and they sent it in and then I came into Nickelodeon probably like three times. Mm -hmm. And then we had to like mix and match sessions with the other actors Mm -hmm. and then... And then uh, I finally got the call again. I think the whole process was about was about a year, and it was really I think my first job ever at Nickelodeon as well, uh, as far as uh, the an- animation goes. Mm-hmm. My first j- actual TV job in in my whole life was actually a Nickelodeon show back <laughs> at Nickelodeon Studios in Orlando on yeah. a show called Taina, a live action show. I was a, a student at the middle school on the Taina show wow i was a reoccurring character on so that. you and nick go so, way back yeah and i yeah. love nickelodeon i was on double yeah. dare i got slimed as a kid <laughs> and then actually i got to do double dare at comic-con recently yeah last year i think it was or yeah. something and that was fun and i won i, I didn't get slimed i won <laughs> but i love nickelodeon it's really dear to my heart yeah and and yeah so the process took about a year and then i got the call and then uh you know history happened what is your process like as a voice actor to create some of these voices. I know that you said before that like you went in to audition for Beast Boy or when you when you're recording Beast Boy that you saw an image and then the voice just came out of like you yeah, didn't I even know did, you Yeah, I never did I never did the did voice. Yeah. I never did Beast Boy's voice before I walked into the recording studio mm-hmm. uh, and I saw his picture and I heard a character description. I didn't have any I didn't prepare before. I didn't even I don't think I even received anything to prepare with wow so i got there and they're like here he is this is what he does and i just went in the booth and yo out came this voice and um i don't know where it came from where beast boy came from (laughs) and it just came through and i think a lot of my characters are like that if if it's if it's in if it's supposed to be it's already in me and it'll just Mm -hmm. come through um and since i've been acting since i've been a little boy i've Mm -hmm. got a lot of experience with developing characters and I've had a lot of booth time. Yeah, <laughs> to the point now we're not not I'm not only just on the mic, but now I'm creating shows too and yeah. producing them, which is not easy. Like animation takes a long time, and there's a lot of moving parts. And... What is it like to be part of the very exclusive I've worked with Andrea Romano Club? What is that like? Andrea Romano <laughs> is awesome. She's I mean, beyond awesome. She's the one who fought for me to get my first role ever yeah. of the role of Beast Boy 16 years ago. I'm eternally grateful for her, and it's been a blast to work with her. Obviously, she's, in my opinion, there's nobody better than her as a voice director, and mm-hmm. she got to direct the most recent incar- our Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles show, which has been awesome. She's the best. I love her. She's kind of like my mother in art, you know? Yeah. Turtle Papa Kevin Eastman has said that you Kevin. are... Mikey, man, he yeah. said he's given you that blessing. What's it like to uh, to get to know him and kind of live in that world of turtles? Well, the cool story is uh, when I first there's there's a lot of cool stories, but yeah. the, the, the <laughs> beginning of it all, like when I when I first got the role of Michelangelo, which took about a year of casting actually before really? I got the call. They're like, you got the role. Right when I got the role, Kevin Eastman was down on Sunset Boulevard doing like a, a pop up like art signing thing. No, he had a gallery there. Oh, very cool. Like he brought his living room or, or his <laughs> office there and worked out of the Atomic Comics wow. for like a month. And that's right when I got the role, and I went over there for a party, like, and I met him, and I'm like, yo. I'm 
Mikey in the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And from that moment on, we just we just kind of hit it off. And yeah. I just loved his energy. That was my first time meeting him. But he's an angel. I mean, he's he's such a beautiful human being and so humble and, and so talented. And mm-hmm. I just fell in love with him. And he definitely um, has, I told him how much he influenced me as a boy growing up on Turtles. <laughs> and then um, just this whole time, he's kind of uh, been there as a supporter. And he's definitely, you know, dubbed me the Mikey, and his, <laughs> you know, his favorite Mikey. And um, I'm I'm eternally grateful for Kevin and he's a dear friend of mine and and I love him I mean look what he's done he's created a something that hopefully will live forever the the turtledom is and it's a rare phenomenon too oh, yeah. like the ninja turtles is something there's probably no there's never going to be another thing like it because it's such a big it already takes up so much space you can never copy yeah. <laughs> it there can never be another ninja turtles and even tried, if you do like yeah. ninja lizards or whatever yeah. <laughs> it, it can't live next to the ninja turtles it's I like know. Or it's too cool it's too big it's too original and it's so expansive and that's because of him and his partner laird but really for me kevin is kevin's the Guy. And then here's another mm. human being that I love very much. I've loved the opportunities I've had to talk to Ciro Nielli, man. Just such a genius. What has it been like working with him? Well, I've known Ciro since the beginning uh, of my career as a voice actor. He was a director on Teen Titans. Yeah, that's right. So I've known him a long time. And then he cast me in his original show called Super Robot Monkey Team Hyperforce Go mm-hmm. on Disney, which was way ahead of its time. It's an amazing show. Mm-hmm. Um, the name of your character was Chiro, which Chiro. is basically Ciro. Yeah, <laughs> and um, he's a master. He's a genius. He's my. He's one of my best friends. I love him so much. And then when he got the role, when he got the gig of, you know, being the showrunner and creator of the new Ninja Turtles series at Nick, he's like, dude, I want you to be in the show, and I want you to be Mikey. And I was like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? That'd be a dream come true. And. Mm-hmm. I kind of got to be with him from day one, even before I got the role, I would come over to Nickelodeon and hang out and watch him work and just kind of, we'd share the experience of the development together and it, and I'd help inspire the, him. And obviously he just is infinitely inspired because he, he loves the, tur- the turtle so much. He knew what he was doing from the beginning. Everything he does is very specific. He's a, he's a real master. Yeah. He's, um, there's, he's truly just a master. And, um, I, you know, he used to sleep under his desk here at Nickelodeon. He wow. put his heart, his soul, his blood, his tears, his whole life, the past, I guess, eight years or so into mm-hmm. the Ninja Turtles. And he really blessed everybody up. Um, hopefully they'll be able to get him back to do more. And I think he, I know he would. I know he'll always be there for these turtles. Yeah, because they're like family to him, man. Yeah, it? these are his babies. <laughs> As a fan of so many of the different characters you played, I mean, we didn't even talk about Zat in Star Wars The Clone Wars. You played Two in The Legend of Korra. Mm -hmm. You played Jack of the Royal Flush Gang in (laughs) Justice League. Like, you've done so many. You're one of these voice actors that has an IMDb that's longer than, like, most novels. But do you have any favorite moments of with some of these characters do you have a favorite beast boy moment within teen titans or teen titans go do you have a favorite michelangelo moment within the ninja turtles like something that happened in the story or something that that character went through do you do you as a as a fan of these characters have any of those favorite moments i have so many favorite moments i mean as far as michelangelo goes i think my favorite moment of all time at this point is uh it's a it's a moment that happens on the new rock city and bebop dvd where Hmm. There's a special uh, music video called Ice Cream Kitty. <laughs> it's a song that I wrote and produced and performed on. Um, and my buddy DJ, DJ Him and I um, produced a song together and wrote it. And Ciro Nielli, uh directed it and they put it on the new TMNT Rock City Bebop DVD. And I just love Ice Cream Kitty and I love the music video and I love the song so I think that's kind of the most special that's, that's awesome. kind of like the icing on the cake for me the ice yeah. cream kitty on the cake <laughs> for me with um, Mikey the Mikey moment is to do that do that song and, and to see him perform it um, in this music video is just really enjoyable and Ciro Nielli really just rocked it and I I remember um, recently I got to talk to the animation team in Canada that actually animated the Ice Cream Kitty music video and they mm-hmm. go hey man we love this song so much that we pulled all our best animators yeah. to, to animate this music video for you and I know 
Nickelodeon wasn't intending to spend so much money or time on it, <laughs> but it, it actually... It's a labor of love. Yeah, and it happened, and it's That's amazing. Beautiful. Yeah. Kitty. My kitty, she knows I care. Four paws, four claws, and ice cream hair. Four kicks, I lick her from ear to ear. And when I need a friend, she's always here. Uh, you've written other songs for other cartoons as yeah. well, right? Yeah, I've, I've written quite a few songs for Teen Titans Go, mm -hmm. and I uh, hope to do more. Um, a couple of them, uh, I, I don't know, maybe seven? Seven? I've done about seven songs for Teen Titans Go, wow. and it's so fun to see my songs um, on TV and uh, being basically uh, you know, animated to my characters, sing them, and, mm -hmm. and it's just really fun. I love that. So I'm stepping into the realm. A lot of the shows that I'm developing now um, are very uh, heavily um, in, uh, music yeah. um, oriented. I just love putting music into everything. There's love a new it. show that I'm developing right now with Roddenberry Productions, you know, the creators of oh, Star Trek. Oh, my goodness, yeah. I'm the executive producer of a new series called Rod and Barry. Um, <laughs> and I play Barry. Um, and uh, it's these two aliens that come to destroy Earth, but they fall in love with pop culture. <laughs> and um, I'm, you know, music is a big is going to be a big part of that. And I just try to, again, because it's who I am, I, it kind of naturally uh, happens. Music yeah. becomes a big part of everything that I do. Hopefully, Greg, you got an opportunity to say something to your fans. Yeah, the fans of your characters: Beast Boy, Michelangelo, Iron Fist, Danny Rand. What would you like to say to the fans? I would like to say to my fans is that everything you've ever wanted, you'll receive it and you'll get it in a way you never could have imagined, better than you could have imagined every time, as long as you do what you love. And it's um, not about making money because it's got to be about you loving what you do and then you'll eventually get paid for it. So don't worry about the money. That stuff comes as long as you do what you love because you actually wind up become, becoming so good at what you do, you'll get paid for it. Mm -hmm. And more so, the richness of the experience of doing what you love far surpasses the money. But you just don't ever even have to think about it because it really does come. The, the universe is uh, infinite in all directions, so there's never a lack of um, anything. So don't be scared. Oh, there's so many voice actors. Uh, I can't be a voice actor. Or Oh, there's too many race car drivers or doctors or whatever the heck it is there's infinite amounts of everything so allow yourself to have everything you've ever wanted and only more of that will come to you greg thank you so much for coming in and talking to us man i really yeah, appreciate man. it thank you that was beautiful that was very fun that was really fun yeah. that was awesome you're yeah. a beautiful human being thank you you too yeah. There you have it, boys and girls, our conversation with the one and only Greg Sipes. And when I say one and only, I mean the one and only Greg Sipes. Guys, you're not going to want to miss an episode of the podcast, so please subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Visit us online at nickanimationpodcast.com for more episodes and tons of cool bonus content like some behind-the-scenes Ninja Turtle stuff. Thanks to the awesome crew who puts this podcast together. This podcast is produced by Jonathan Highlander, Dana Vasquez, Everhart, Tony Gutierrez, Jamie Goss, and Andrew Huebner. Original music by Useful Creatures. This week's episode edited by Jonathan Highlander and Josh Caldwell. Our social media team is Narbe Manassians, Sammy Armager, and David Watson. Manny Grujava is our engineer. Until next time, thanks for listening to the Nickelodeon Animation Podcast, and keep watching cartoons. Cartoons.